to my friends, you have uh, just about joined me, putting some fresh insulation into the back of my machine 781. I noticed that the original stuff was starting to crumble a little bit, so I've already cut this to size and put it in. So we're going to begin by putting in the base insulation. I have got this that out here by the lamp is. I'll just get that out your way. As you can just about see if that'll focus. I'll just try and get rid of some of that glare. In fact, I'll kill the lamp wherever it's gone. Ah, there it is. Yeah, you can see all that insulation anyway. So I'm going to get the speaker and I'm going to install that stuff. As you can see, I've already put the back one in because I had to pre-cut the hole oh, right there to actually get it to fit in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing as I did with that, which is to roll up the insulation. And this is going to be the top part. This is it. A nice big roll of it. A bit like sushi. Anyways, uh, this is going to be the top roll. And we're going to put this inside like this. As you can see, nice and rolled up. Slam it in there. Get it to fit by working it in, and this is going to be an absolute twit to where uh, actually get in place. So I'm going to have to do the others. I'm going to do this in a second. One side, get into the right place. So I'm going to just push all this up to the top and around about that area, and I'm going to try and start out the back insulation. We'll try and get it all to fit in because this is how you make your speaker sound a lot louder than it actually is. So, whoops, slight problem. Wires are in the way for the tweeter. I couldn't exactly remove those from the crossover driver because the crossover driver can't be that easily removed. So, I'm going to have to try and jiggle the balance. While staring at the camera to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. And you can see that the insulation is there, but it's not going in very well. So, I'm going to get that to go up to the top. Once it's in the top, turn it out, square it, get it in as soon as it's in place. I'll be happy, but it's just not doing it because the wires are all in the way. I'll get them out of the way in a second. Don't you worry about them. There. Got it. Perfect. Now I'm just going to push up at the top. Balance it out. And going in. I'll just make sure that's alright. And make sure that they're in line. Make sure there's no broken wires when that first bit of insulation going in and flipping it, this is good for warming your hands up but yeah, you just want to get it behind this main bit as I am, pull it forward a little bit sometimes helps and just push on the top get it all in compress the layers and once your first bit complete that's the top layer done completely finito and so I'm going to get the next piece of insulation, same size, same shape, not nearly enough, and this one's going to go in the bottom. Of course, it's the same way as you uh, put the other bits in. Let's just put the cap to the side that she's going to sit on the uh, main insulation that goes behind the subwoofer to get that to sound a little bit louder as well because if she does, I will have to kill her. Right. Anyways, let's get this lot settled in. Make sure it's not in the way of any wires. Right. Push it in and slide it up and around. And push this up to the top making sure not to disturb any wiring which is the annoying part when you've got a tweeter and a crossover in there no subwoofer luckily because the subwoofer is an absolute twit to get around but once you get this look in place 
It's easy. Just push around, work it all in. Like that. Just get it all sitting nice and tight inside the speaker enclosure. Ah. Since this is almost in, I'm going to have to slide that across to get that in there. Pull this sponge out again to get all that to sit inside it. And push all this in to get it to fit. Once it all fits in nice and snug, I am about ready. But as it is now, it's not quite there because I need to get this top piece straight so that it's hidden. And I'm going to have to try and slide it in around the top bits. And there we go. So I now have that insulation fully installed. I'm just compressing the top bits. And that is now done. I'm just pushing this back piece in. And that is six minutes of an annoyance that you want to go away. Once it's done, you're okay. Okay. So we've done that. Now for the insulation I've just thrown over there. Here it is. Now I'm going to roll this up into a certain pattern that will help me achieve the extra sound. So just fold it, fold it, and fold it some more to make a nice little package. And then put that little package inside your sub. So get your speaker wire out of the way and stuff that in where the subwoofer is going to go like that. So the magnet can easily settle in like that. And there you go. Just pull it out to the edge so that you can press your subwoofer when it's going in like that. Alright, now I'm going to go get the subwoofer. Freshly recorded. Because I burned this one up again. That's another 160 quid I just had to waste on it. So, I've got it now. And the reason why I replaced the insulation is because I noticed it was starting to all just blast out of the base part. So I took all the old stuff out, put that in the bin, gave it a good vac out inside, and noticed that this speaker cabinet, solid wood. Absolute solid, 100%, no lies. So, before we install the subwoofer, we're going to make sure it's the right type of wattage. So here is our subwoofer. Of course, it will be the right wattage for this, because it's the right recode kit that I put on. 100 watts, 6 ohms. I believe this is about a 4 inch uh, driver. It's made by Mission. Uh, the basket was made in Hunt Huntingdon. And the recall kit was made in Vancouver and transported by boat to me. It was shipped over from um, from uh, Canada. So let's begin by connecting up the power leads. I'm going to make sure I've got my positive and negatives right because you don't want it vibrating the wrong way. Or if you don't get the right base from it, you don't get the right tones. So I'm going to connect my positive up first. And once you. Sadly I don't have a soldering iron so this is going to be the best I can do for now until I can get one and solder these joints, tin them, link them up and I've done with it. Basically just connect the wires up. There's holes in the bottoms of the contacts so it's okay for me to just, slap, just twist the wires a little bit, tighten them up a little more, slide them through the connectors. Pull it upwards, twist it nice and tight, stop it from coming off again. And I'm done with that for until I can get a soldering iron. And that's how that's done. And then you want to just take the sub, line it up, push it into the back, making sure that your wires are all nice and safe. Uh, the best thing you can do at this very point is to take the sub with two hands, hold, uh, hold two corners like that, and as you're pushing it in, push it upwards until you can hold it in place with a screw at one side. These are Allen bolts because that's what originally came with this speaker. Now where did the other ones go? There's one. I'll put this one in the top right hand to centre it up. And that's those just in place there. And there's my other. The reason why I'm only putting three in is because, well, the other one doesn't go in there, it just slides clean through that bit. So, I'm going to just slide that in. Oh, it's not having
fucking none of it. So I'll grab my Allen key. The right size of course, I'm not sure which size it is. All I know is it's Imperial measurements. There we go. And uh, just start tightening these screws up. Get them in. We're already starting to get base from it, even though they're not fully in. And if you get a better seal with just the base part at the top of the speaker, it will look and sound fantastic. These speakers originally sound good anyway, so I'm just going to get this in. I'm also going to do the top one. That one's a little bit easier because I can use pivot. I can pivot the Allen key around. Oops. <laughs> but I wasn't expecting professional recon kits like these to be so expensive until I looked on eBay and I found one for 15 quid and it was a full sub with basket and I thought no, I only need the cone because the basket itself is in good, oh, good enough condition to say it's over 10 years old. Was it 5? I can't remember. But anyways, it's quite old. So just after re restoring this speaker I decided I would do the other one and then found out I ran out of money which is not good because the other one's in the same state that this one was when I picked them up so and it ha also has the wrong dust cap on it now I have got the dust cap off of the old speaker well the old oops recon kit for this speaker and that's good because I can use that but I'm going to do that when I get a full recon kit for another £160 and I might even pay for parts and, well, I might even pay for the labour cost and spend about £195 on it. So, let's get out of this screw now. Try to unscrew it, listen. There we go. And there we go. So, now that I've reformed the internals, put some new sponge in, put the um, rest of the muffler in, muffling equipment in, there's only one thing to do, and that is the tube for the base part. As you can see, it was marked with 781, 100 watts. I got this for 95 pence on off of the eBay. So, we're going to put it in that base part at the top. It's just as easy as pick it up hide the plastics around, take it, line it into the base part and just give it a good tap and it goes clean it, just make sure it's nice and strong and then make sure it's cranking air. So let's power up this amplifier now. Just to make sure that I've definitely got that right. So let's hope that this is correct, sounds nice. Sounds like there's no rubbing. I think I do check the sound quality, and that is one thing I can do too easily. So let's begin with the two HX muffle cutter. Fifteen or sixteen. That's bad, right? Yeah, so the other one going to go back to the last one that I resend with the clone on the loose. Okay, so let's uh, get you round to that subwoofer and crank the water cooker through it. Showing you how to work. So I'm just trying to get you on the floor watching the camera and make sure I've got the on here. So let's get you around to the sub. Focus you in on it. Let's play it. I said let's play it. Let's put it in the Let's go. Oh, that caused the 
flipping uh, controller circuit in the sound system to flipping die off again. And then we have to wait for it to power back up. And as soon as it has, that's a problem. So I'm going to pause that, drop the volume a little bit further because these are 100 watt speakers on a 25 watt amplifier. So two vibrating like that is pretty darn good. But because they're in the base box and they're getting pressure, it's a little bit harder to drive that subwoofer, so they're demanding about 100 watts instead of uh, 90. Ah, it's coming back on now. Let's play again. It's playing okay. Yeah, it sounds better. Now. Okay, it's first part time. So, 
what's that up then? <laughs> So yeah, that's giving it some. I heard a couple of cups and pots rattle in the kitchen. And that's a concrete floor, so it's definitely nuts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the blooming safety cuts off again. Now that is, uh, thank you very much for watching this part of the video. It's been going much for the past 15 minutes. Uh, the first 10 minutes was of course me filming the uh, cabinet. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.